a red-legged partridge calls out his territorial challenge. It's the beginning of the year when these sociable birds leave the valleys and lowlands to gather in groups on hills and moors all over Spain in preparation for the breeding season. Both sexes are multicolored with bright red legs, red beaks and red spectacles. Most of their time is taken up with two favorite activities, pecking for seeds and running about. In fact, they much prefer running to flying, and even courtship is conducted on the move. When he's impressed her with his song, she allows him to follow her into the bushes, where together they'll choose their nest site. A Benelli's eagle returns from the lowlands to the rocky country where it'll nest. It's known in Spain as the partridge eagle because of its partiality for eating plump partridges. But it also hunts other birds, using flying skills unsurpassed among eagles. Meanwhile, the red legs are in a spring fever of feeding, and a partridge that's eating can become so engrossed that a genet is able to slink up within close range. But a partridge can fly if it has to, and the genet is left puzzling out where it went. A hollowed out clump of grass is all that the female partridge uses when she's sitting on her dozen or more eggs, even though there are marauders about. A family of wild boars turn the place upside down with their snouts as they sniff and dig for food. The partridge panics when the boars discover her hideout. But she'll start all over again and lay another dozen eggs. Benelli's eagles make their nest on a cliff ledge above a wooded valley, choosing a site that's practically inaccessible to other predators. One or two down-covered young hatch out late in spring. Though they're weak and helpless, they're so isolated from possible danger that they have no need for camouflage. Both their parents bring them food, mostly partridges and rabbits. The female has to tear the meat into chunks for them to swallow. The two chicks eat a huge amount of food, maybe a hundred pounds between them in the three months they're in the nest they'll grow very slowly and steadily compared with other birds. The adult male is close by. 
his underside is almost completely white. The browner chest of the female may mean she's a young bird in eagle terms, say three or four years old, and this is her first family. Below the cliffs, the tranquil woodland scene is the background for a frenzy of activity among the birds and insects as spring turns to summer. The great grey shrike has a wide repertoire of cries and notes. It can also mimic other songbirds, like the calls of the goldfinch. But while the goldfinch is a seed eater, the shrike is a hunter, a scaled down version of the true birds of prey. The shrike chicks are a few days old. When they hatched, they were small, blind and without feathers. But they grow at such a rate that already the six or seven young are overcrowding their nest. A shrike's eyesight is as keen as an eagle's. It hunts either by stalking or by standing still on a perch, watching for any sign of movement. The tip of the beak is hooked, and there's an extra device, a tooth and notch, that can be used to snap a grasshopper's hard skeleton as easily as a dry twig. It's difficult for an eagle to pick out a single target from among a flock of crows. The Benelli's is the one eagle that finds it easy. The other crows return to their nests, well hidden in the treetops. But no tree nest is safe from the agile Janet. It takes no notice of the crow's aggressive cries and waits for its opportunity. It was the eggs the Janet was after, and it eats them all. The shrike has spotted a creature not often seen in daylight, a scorpion. 
It wastes no time in immobilizing the sting in the tail. The rest of the scorpion will make a good meal for one of its chicks. The red-legged partridge chicks have no need for a nest. They can see and walk as soon as they hatch, and their excellent camouflage helps hide them when they're still. Their mother's role is a guardian and not a food provider, since the chicks can feed themselves right from the start, pecking for insects as well as for seeds. But when the female rests in the shade on a summer's day, the chicks may wander a bit too far. It's little wonder the shrike is known as a butcher bird from its habit of impaling the victim on a spike. The shrike chicks are already beginning to leave the nest. They are just three weeks old and in another two they'll be fully fledged, killers in their own right, and will have abandoned the nest completely. Whenever bad weather approaches, Benelli's eagles fly back quickly to their nest, where the female shelters both chicks under her body. The storm is over, and the male soon dries himself as he circles slowly, gaining height on a rising current of warm air. The female is left to repair the damage done to the nest. The male spends less time at the nest than the female. Their chicks are now about a month old and have a second set of down feathers. Though they can manage to squirt droppings away from the ledge, their wings are stubby, their legs are weak, and they still rely entirely on the adults to go hunting for all their food. The red-legged partridges are still on the move, the mother leading her remaining chicks from one feeding place to another. The chicks are almost half-grown and follow the female wherever she goes. She gets enough moisture from her food and doesn't need to drink, but the young ones get very tired and very thirsty. Partridges rarely bathe in water, 
but dust themselves instead. All the family joins in, letting the fine grains clean their feathers of dirt and mites. The wild boar family has another way of coping with itchy skin and enjoys it just as much. Four months or so after hatching, the young red legs are fully grown, independent, and look exactly like the adults. But only part of each original family is left alive after the repeated attacks by the many predators that like eating partridges. Overhead are Benelli's, the partridge eagle. There are survivors, but the partridge eagle's skill in hunting the red legs on the ground has quite an effect on the size of the partridge population in Spain. For most of the year, Benelli's eagles specialize in hunting birds particularly the red-legged partridges. But when there are large chicks to feed, the eagle, in this case the male, turns its attention to better-sized prey. Rabbits. The rabbit escapes the first time, but not the second. Back at the nest, the male shares out the rabbit among his whole family. The two chicks are now a couple of months old and have proper feathers at last, except for their white heads. They're not ready to leave their cliff ledge home though. Both the male and the female will continue to feed their young for another month, maybe longer. Despite their size, these chicks are quite incapable of looking after themselves. By the end of summer, the two young eagles are the same size as their parents and have their full set of juvenile feathers. In contrast to the whitish belly of the adult, the young are ginger red underneath. As they spend their last weeks on the cliff ledge, exercising their wings and legs, the wooded valleys below them start to take on their autumnal hues.
One autumn day, the more adventurous of the young eagles, having flapped its way up to the top of the cliff, launches itself out over the valley. Not all its skills are perfect, even landing and takeoff. And it must learn hunting techniques from its parents by staying close to them until the winter months. A cautious partridge like this one manages to survive to the end of the year. But even then, it'll only live another five years at best. The odds are better for this young eagle. It may live five times as long. But then you can look at it another way. For while there are only 5,000 Benelli's eagles in the world, there are probably 10 million red-legged partridges. There's something for everyone in the new season on Channel 4. A close-up look at the living body uses a fascinating mixture of microphotography and computer animation to show how the body's many components combine to meet the demands of everyday life. Childhood misconceptions are recalled in Just Sex. I remember saying to her, I don't mind the idea of giving birth because they just cut you from your neck to your belly right, and take it out. But I just can't imagine doing the other thing. Beginning tomorrow at 8.40, a new series of Hey Good Looking deals with design in the age of technology and the factors which influence the process of turning ideas into objects. And at 10.30 tomorrow, the start of a series which offers some food for thought about the British diet and how changes in eating habits could significantly improve the nation's health. Programs for all tastes in the new season on Channel 4. She thinks we ought to look after ourselves. Get some exercise, don't have too much caffeine. Cafe hard decaffeinated, just smooth, rich coffee. Mmm, taste smashing. I'm not too keen on the exercise bit, but cafe hard's an excellent idea when coffee tastes this good. Who needs caffeine? If you've got 500 pounds or more, the Leeds have set a new gold standard. The liquid gold account. The Leeds liquid gold account recasts the whole deal for savers. Gives you outstanding interest. Lets you get at your money whenever you want. Liquid gold from the Leeds sets a new gold standard. own oil.
oil. It couldn't choose a better oil than Duckham's Hypergrade. Duckham's Hypergrade, the engine's choice. Smash! Plus up! Plus speed! The answer is simple. Life's rough on soft, delicate skin, so a kind way to care for it is a simple way. No perfume, no coloring, just the purest ingredients make it safe, even for sensitive skin. The answer, the answer is simple. Here come the brand boosters. Always high in fiber. It's their aim to bombard the boredom out of brand. Making sure when it comes to the taste, Farmhouse Brand is right on target. Oh, what a crisp performance. Farmhouse Brand is good stuff. New honey and nut, banana and apple, and original Farmhouse Brand. Reach for the taste. My dogs do enjoy pedigree chum mixer. The smell's right, it tastes right. It's nourishing and crunchy. You clean it up and it's all gone. My dogs really adore Chum Mixer. They polish it off with great speed. I feel I really am doing the very best I can for my dogs. I think Pedigree Chum Mixer adds character to the meal. I'm absolutely thrilled to bits that I changed. If Pedigree Chum Mixer wasn't the best, I shouldn't feed it. Now part two of the repeat of How Did We Get to Here, dealing with the youth training scheme in mainland Britain. Northern Ireland has its own scheme. Two, 